Hi, this is Bootstrap Algebra, Lesson 8, Defining Functions. Uh, let's bring up uh, the Bootstrap Curriculum, Courses, Algebra, latest version, so we'll get to 2020. And let's look at what we did last time. So we looked at making our game images. I hope you had fun with that. We finally get um, out of the code a little bit and back into our game, or actually put together the, the, some, some coding things you've been learning and your game images. Um, you learned how to um, define a, uh, a new value so that you don't have to repeat things. You can actually define a constant. And then you learned how to pull down images from the network and get those into your uh, game. And then hopefully you were able to define a background, a player, a danger, and a target, and then use the screenshot function that they supplied for us to be able to compose all of those on the screen at the same time and actually see the elements of your game on the screen. So if you haven't made it that far, um, go back to um, Lesson 7. Make sure that you're able to do those things. Um, if any of the coding parts um, were difficult for that, then um, uh, go back and look at the Defining Values video. Um, if, you don't have the, if you don't have the images exactly the way you want them, don't worry about that. Don't spend too much time on that right now. You'll get to go back and what we call iterate, so just repeat that process to keep refining and making the, um, your game elements to be more like uh, what you want them to look like. So as long as you're able to have some kind of a placeholder uh, image for each of these four elements and actually be able to run the screenshot, see what those things look like, that's fine for now. Don't get too bogged down in um, making everything uh, perfect as you um, design your game, um, come to understand those elements better, then you can spend more time on uh, the ones you want to make better. So we're going to um, look at a super fun um, uh, element of programming, defining functions. We'll get to do it all with um, images. We won't have to do uh, arithmetic stuff. So let's look at our slides. Uh, let's see, make sure you're logged into WeScheme. Let's see, am I am not logged in? I'll log in. So I'm logged into WeScheme. Hopefully you also have a, um, uh, a saved program that's your game that we got from doing the um, game template starter file. So um, hopefully you're logged into the same WeScheme account and you see that. We'll use WeScheme a little later. So um, think about <laughs> if this person in our, in our uh, slide loves to make green triangles. So they want to make green triangles that are size 50 and make solid green triangles that are size 80 and make solid green triangles that are size 200 and solid green triangles that are size 275. And they repeated it on the screen and I said it every time and it gets a little old um, to repeat most of the words in those uh, phrases that many times and it gets tedious in programs and there's a lot of reasons also in programs we don't want to repeat those things. So when we write out the we scheme code to do those things, well, do you see a pattern? What was constant? What's the con what's the, what are the same things? When we lay it out like this, it's really easy to see what the same th what, what's repeated among these and what changes. Right, it just lines up. It's really easy to see those things. Um, what do we do the last time we saw something repeated? Well, if you remember, we may use the define keyword in we scheme or define function, define function in we scheme, and use that to uh, define a name that we could uh, then refer to later uh, in our code. And then if we wanted to change it, if we wanted to experiment, we only had to change that one place. So here's a little call and response. Since I'm not in front of you with the class, we won't do that. But when I say GT50, you reply, triangle 50 solid green. So we're getting the idea that maybe if I knew the right way to do it, 
I could shorten this and represent it and only the changeable things. I'm going to go back to the slide before. Look at what changed. Just the size because we made solid green triangles of different sizes. So what's changing if I could make a new function called GT that somehow refers to all of these things that stay the same but lets my 50 change. GT80, think about what that looks like. GT200, GT275, and you probably were able to guess those and fill them in based on what we saw before. So we can write using the example function and you know it's a great named function because that's what it's for. These are examples of uh, our repeated patterns. GT is the function. 25 was the um, the thing that changed and that corresponds to the triangle with the triangle function with these arguments. So let's look at page 26. If you don't have that printed out in front of you, find that in your, um, let's see, I haven't gone back yet to, oh, yep, defining functions. There it is. All right, so this is um, uh, label page 26 online. If you uh, are using the uh, full PDF version, it may be a different page, but it should be uh, a page talked about fast functions. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a bunch of examples of these GT. So I'm going to switch back over to the slides. So here's a contract. You know all about contracts. The name of this function probably wouldn't mean much to somebody else, but to us who are obsessed with green triangles, it means green triangle. So we're just going to name our function GT. It takes a number in and outputs an image. So here is our new function, GT100. Here is what it means. So when we go back to... Um, these evaluate this circles of evaluation. Here is GT. Here is what it means. So when we look at it in the example format, here is GT, and here is what it means. Now we don't yet know how it got that way. How GT, and we'll get there very soon. Just a couple of slides of how we actually make a GT that does that. But for right now, we want to see that these two do the same thing. And that's what the example does, is it takes two, two things. Here's one in parentheses. Here's another. And it compares them. If they're exactly the same, it tells you that that was a good, a correct example. If they're different, it'll tell you that. So that's what we want to see now, is that we've, we've got two different functions. They have different domains. But uh, possibly, but they have um, the same range. So they're in fact they're going to have identical outputs. They're going to actually have the same output. So here are the things that changed in those, which is the size, right? So the size when we when we look through these examples. We'll talk about what thing actually changed. And we know that like triangle has a function name of triangle, has a size, has a style that's a string, has a color that's a string. Well, these were all the same. The thing that changed was the size. So here's how we could use a define keyword and before, remember, we were defining just a single um, element, like um, you know, a string or a number, and giving it a name. Well, now we're going to define something in parentheses, and we're going to say it's equivalent to this other entire function, and they've left blanks for us for 
the size. So instead of having an actual number in here, because if we had the actual number 100, if we, if we put a 100 over here, we're only going to get 100 size triangles, right? So if, if our function, if we put a 100 inside the definition of our function, so look, this is the define, so we're inside something called a definition. If we put a 100 there, we're only going to get 100. So we need a placeholder. Uh, remember before we talked about the term variable because it can change, so it varies. So we're going to call it, we can call it anything we wanted, but because it relates to the size of the triangle, let's call it size. So let's uh, get ready to do some stuff. So um, I'm going to make a new, you don't have to do this yet. Don't, don't follow along yet. Start a new program. And I'm going to name it Defining Functions. I can save it. All right, in the Definitions area, type your contract for GT and then click Run and test out GT. So contract and examples, this is going to be just like we have here. They gave us the contract, examples. All right, I'll try to do that from memory. So the contract, I'm going to put inside a comment. So I'll start with a semicolon. And the name was GT. And uh, it took a number as input and it gave me an image as output. Let's make sure that looks right. Yes. All right. And let's just make a green triangle. So I, even though we're going to type the examples, so that's the reason they call it examples, I want to make an example. So a triangle. A tri triangle 50. Solid. Oops. Solid. Green. Oh, see, I've also learned if you, um, it's probably a good idea to shut down your browser between lessons. Um, this uh, area can get, uh, it, it can get a little messed up. And if, if, if weird things start happening over here, you know, if like you, 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 you can't actually just press enter and have it make the, the triangle um, and you, you don't have any syntax problems, like, you know, you, you, you have a balance parentheses, so you have the same number closing as you do opening and it still doesn't do it right. Reload your browser. Um, make sure that um, you have a good Wii scheme environment. And the easiest thing to do is just between lessons. Make sure you, you quit and then then come back. Okay, so here's an example. All right, so that's what that example looks like. All right, and I um, will go back and check, but the function name is example, and I'm going to call it GT. And if I made a 50, all right, so I don't have that yet, right? But if I did, I'll copy that, and paste it, it would be the same as that, right? Yep. Definitions area, type your contract, and definitions for GT. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's do one more example. And once you have one example, you can make others. I'm going to paste. And we want to say that the size 100 also is 100. All right. Now we can define. So I'm going to say define. That's what they told us to do. And we made something where we put in, we, we essentially can take one of these examples, copy, But remember, and in fact, let's take the whole example. I'm going to copy this whole thing. Start it that way. I'm going to come down, just paste that in. All right, so that we know that example. Uh, oops, I don't have an opening paren. Good. Nope, that doesn't seem right. There. All right. That was the whole example. But I can now define. Okay, so now I'm going to have a new function, 
right? Remember before we defined constants, um, color as green, right? We could do something like that. We know how to do that. All right, so this is a little more um, uh, robust. This is something super cool. Now we can define our own functions, not just constants. So it's a little bit more syntax, but it, it essentially has the same uh, look to it. Define takes two things. Here's one. Here's two. If we left it like that, then it only get size 50 green, size 50 triangles, right? But we saw what changed in our examples was the size. So we want to replace size in both places. I could also leave it like this. This would be fine. What it would do was is, in fact, let's define that. Okay, good. They don't match, right? See, this example failed uh, at line three, one, two, three. Because what happens when we do GT of 50? That works fine. Because, look, we remember, we, we don't have size here. We just have 50. This function, no matter what we put in, 2,000, only makes size 50 triangles. And that's not what we want. We want size. So this is one of the magic things of um, defining functions. The size didn't mean anything before. This is communication for us. This is this is something we are naming it. We can name it whatever we want, but we know it's going to control the size of the triangle. So we're calling it size, and it's saying, okay, GT function that I'm making, when you see size inside, replace it with what you got. So now I have to rerun because uh, I have to rerun this. And now we didn't get any output because when we called it, that's what we'll say how we're gonna we're gonna gonna uh, access this function. We called it G, with GT. We called it with 50 as the argument. We called it with 100 as the argument, and we got the right size triangle over here. So now I can say GT 50. Enter. Makes a 50. I'm not gonna say 2,000 because that'll be really big. But let's say 100. GT5 will be super tiny, teeny tiny triangle. So now we have a general function that makes green triangles, and we can put it any size we want, and we tested it. So this program went through, and when it got to GT50, it says, I don't know what GT is, but it looks inside our file and says, oh, you defined GT. So you made like a new magic incantation, a new spell that teaches this computer what GT means. And it means make a triangle of size 50. All right. So we're going to call that whole process. Um, well, well, uh, we'll tell you later. Well, we're going to call it the design recipe where we uh, use our examples. Or we use our um, contract uh, and we use some examples, and then we used all of these things to make a new function based on the examples that meets the contract. That'll be our design recipe. Um, so now I want you to, this is a place for you to pause, and when I tell you to pause, you go into, um, look at page 26, define a new function, called BC, which makes only solid blue circles. So it would be great for you to um, define, uh, to make a new Wii scheme program called Defining Functions. And over in the Interactions area, practice working out solid blue circles so that you can see how to define your BC. And then in your contract, uh, in your uh, page, make a contract for BC, do some examples for BC. You can test out your BC examples here. And then make in your defining functions program, write out the contract, write out the examples, do the define, and then run it. And if you got nothing, that means the example worked fine. And then you can 
test it uh, otherwise by saying GT and give it a size that you didn't put over there, like 57. Okay, and see if your BCs make um, solid blue circles. So I'll leave this up while you pause. So go ahead and pause now and make uh, a BC function for blue circles. Great. I hope you had fun with that, writing your first functions. All right, so let's now we're gonna tie this back to some to our algebra terms. What is the domain for GT? Well, we can look back at our design recipe. The domain is numbers. So we use the data type name of number, uh, and that is the domain. It's all numbers. Why might someone think the domain for GT contains a number and two strings? Well, they might think that because the domain for the triangle function does take a number and two strings. Right? So the contract, if we were writing the contract for triangle, it would be triangle colon number string string and we get an image right that's the contract for triangle so that function even though they produce identical output they're produced by two different functions one called triangle one called gt and they have so they have the same range but they have different domains so two functions that produce identical output can actually have different domains. The domain depends on how it's defined. And the domain for GT is just a single number, just a number. So why is defining functions useful to us as programmers? Well, hopefully you saw it avoids repeating things. So that makes things easier to change. It... Um, really documents it helps us to document um, what's going on so that if we have if we want to make a bunch of green triangles um, there may be a reason for that I mean GT kind of is on the nose for green triangles but we could also define I'm gonna copy this and instead I could name it um, simple um, tree right and I want to say that the, my tree is defined this way so let's we'll see we can run this I don't have any examples for that but now simple tree 50 so but I could even say that I could now I can change my uh, simple tree but in my program now I know that simple trees um, is a thing that we can talk about. I can talk about the trees and don't get bogged down in the triangles. So that's another th another reason. It's not really shown by the GT um, because GT stands for tri you know green triangle. But um, in this case, we can name it a different name that actually has meaning to us humans in our program and in in how we talk about our program. So that's another uh, useful thing. All right, so now on page 26, you did the BC section. Um, now I want you to please um, write a new function called gold star that takes in a number, produces a solid gold star of that size. So this is very, very similar to the design recipe um, before. And let's go back to see how we're going to going to do it so on you can you can do it on your sheet or if you're ready to do it just in the um, definitions area that's fine too um, but I would uh, the way I would do this to start out is to make sure I understand what gold star means over here so what what um, what programs can I write? What things can I write? What lines can I write over on this side to make the gold star that they want us to make? Um, in fact, can I copy this text? Oops. I'm copy this text. I do this a lot. 
as a programmer and I just paste it right in here uh, oh good it even pasted it in. sometimes you know if you have multiple lines you might have multiple you know put multiple semicolons but this this gave us uh, it's one long line so actually I'll put it and enter in here and then another semicolon all right write a function called gold star that takes in a number and produces a solid gold star of that given size so I would over here in my REPL my interactions area practice that make sure I really understand what that function is supposed to do what that gold star is supposed to look like all right then um, write my contract gold star whatever it takes in whatever it outputs which actually we could write that based on this right we didn't even have to experiment first because it told us it takes in a number so we know the domain and produces a image so we know the range so actually we could write the contract first and actually that's the design recipe write the contract first for gold star do some tests over here do some experimenting in the interactions area until you can write two or three or four example functions so copy this what you did before put them down here with your examples with your um, gold star function and then you have a bunch of examples and then just like I did copy one of those examples down here change the word example to define and then the thing that you want to change give it a name make sure you give it a name both in the arguments to the function you're defining and that you use that name any place in your function uh, definition body in your body of your function that's what we'll call this part the body of the function make sure that you replace any numbers or, or if that's if that's what you want to replace um, with this variable size so we gave the variable a name and then we use it in the body all right, so go ahead, stop now, and um, make this new gold star function. Great. I hope that was fun. Um, the, one of the great things about programming is we can see if we did it right, right? You, you know you did it right because all you need to do, if you do the definition, you run, and then... All right, when we do 2000, I think it'll be really, really big. It might blow up my browser. We'll see. Nope, didn't blow it up. It's humongous. But we know it works. Um, so we, can, we, we don't have to wait for somebody else to tell us. We can experiment and find out whether our stuff works. And now, given this example function, we can even write hundreds and hundreds of experiments if we wanted to and let the computer check all of those. It's pretty simplistic in this case, but you'll find we'll, we'll find other um, times when it's really useful to have these example functions to um, check our work. All right, so now we're going to call it the design recipe. We just want to go over this again. It's super important. We can write the contract. Oh, good. Um, all right, you already did this, so, so we're, we'll go through um, gold star. It takes in a number. It produces an image. Hopefully you got examples something like this after your experimentation. And then to define, we want to find the thing that changes, which again, in this case, is size. Um, you can call it whatever you want, but it's really a size is, is something that communicates well. We make a little template based on our example, but we replace any of those sizes with the word size because that's going to be the variable that's going to come into our function as an argument. And that's going to be the variable that we will be able to use, our function will be able to use in the body to um, understand what size uh, star to make. So if you we were able to do that, we did that already. All right, practice a little more. So this is um, some homework. Um, just practice a little more. Make whatever you want to. It can be related to your game, not related to your game, but come up with your own idea for a function. Uh, you don't have to do it on page 26. I think it's just as, as good and, um, uh, for me, more fun to just do it inside here. So I've already done my own example. 
false for you. Um, so I won't take the time to do another one right now. Um, but um, I would just do, do the, the design recipe right in, in your um, uh, code over here of writing the contract, experimenting, and then coming up with some examples, using those examples as a template to uh, define the function. We will go into, and a lot of people have uh, uh, difficulty with word problems in algebra. It is a big hint. The design recipe is great for helping to uh, solve word problems. And think about when this might be useful outside of programming. Talk to your partner about that. How can having a strategy like a design recipe be useful in solving problems? So you, uh, there's some some. Uh, things here. Let's go back over to our curriculum and you'll see links to the things to work on for next time. It's all of these three optional things. So it's just to get you used to how examples, contracts match up with uh, you know, in different cases. So there's a worksheet on examples, uh, creating contracts from examples, and uh, more. So work on those for next time. Let's make sure we covered everything. We talked about the contract, definition, the design recipe, examples, functions. We are all over making functions. Remember that um, we're going to call the, the, uh, the elements of the contract. The contract is general, and we want to use data types. That's just, um, yeah, that's just, that's what they decided to, that's, you know, how we define a contract. A contract doesn't have a you know a seven for the number. It's got the word number in it, uh, and you know about several different data types now: numbers and strings and images for sure. Uh, syntax. I don't know if we use that term uh, for sure. Um, syntax are the rules that define a language. We borrowed that as computer people from um, linguistics, so people who study human spoken languages. Syntax is the rules of the language of how they're they're put together and uh, computer programming. Um, that's what we call the rules for defining our language. So the we scheme syntax is the rules that that we scheme uses. We looked at all of that. You got a bunch of practice working through the um, design recipe and the additional uh, exercises are the same ones that are up here under optional and that is your homework for next time. Thanks.